Praise be Jesus Christ. I've been thinking a lot in these days about Our Lady of Good Success. It's a pretty obscure Marian apparition, and uh, it deals with the 20th century, like uh, Our Lady of Fatima, and uh, you know many of the other apparitions like Cabejo and uh, Akita. But this is uh, kind of interesting because these apparitions took place between 1594 and 1634. Uh, but it talks about what's going to happen and, and the crises the church would face in the big, in the latter part of the 19th century and for the greater part of the 20th century. And I would propose uh, those crises really continuing on in our own day and age. So. Uh, the most powerful of these apparitions perhaps uh, occurred on February 2nd, 1634. And these apparitions took place in Quito, Ecuador. To a, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a, a nun, a sister named Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres. And uh, Our Lady gives five reasons, five reasons, five, five factors that would lead to the decline of the Catholic faith at this time. Okay, first reason. Uh, the light of faith would be in decline. Uh, heresies would prevail not only in Ecuador but universally. And Our Lady says that as these heresies spread and dominate, the precious light of faith will be extinguished in souls by the almost total corruption of customs. And we could see this, you know, we could see this in our own day and age. It's like you look at pictures from like a hundred years ago. People are like dressed up in uh, in suits and nice dresses, walking down the street, just going about their daily lives. And you know, it's like today we see people like kind of walking around in pajamas all day long, or you know, men and women just dressing so immodestly, and uh, people putting their bodies out there like uh, objects to be to be used uh, to be used for for power over other people. Um, people just treating each other with less and less respect, it seems, and just those basic customs that you know a hundred years ago or so people kind of took for granted. Uh, like how how radically they've changed, how radically they've changed, and this almost total corruption of customs, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we dress, all these things. Um, second reason, second reason Our Lady gives for a decline of faith at this time, that um, the church, the church, her community in particular, and the church at the time, would be infected by bad attitudes, so bad attitudes and false charity. And many vocations would be lost as a direct result of this. So, the faithful souls, Our Lady says, would suffer a continuous and slow martyrdom, weeping in secret, and imploring that such dire times be shortened. And I think about like, you know, the faithful Catholics today who are trying their best, you know, we're, we're, we're all sinners. We all uh, have our own faults and failures, but you know, the ones that are trying, the ones that are showing up Sunday after Sunday, and it's like, for so many of them, it's that feeling of being ostracized, of not being understood by family members and friends. Uh, like, why are you still going to mass? Why are you still trying to be Catholic after all the, after all the garbage we've witnessed the last couple of decades with, you know, the sex abuse crises and financial scandals, all these things, why are you still trying? It's like, you know, that, that martyrdom, that kind of slow white martyrdom that's happening with the faithful who are trying their best to be faithful uh, and, and feel alienated and ostracized in so many ways. So Our Lady talks about that. Our Lady also says uh, a third reason why the Catholic faith would be in decline at this time. She said there would be an almost almost worldwide campaign against the virtues of chastity and purity, and they would succeed in ruining the youth. And Our Lady says this, Our Lady of Good Success affirmed, quote, there will be almost no virgin souls in the world. And it's like human sexuality in so many ways in these last few decades and, you know, the better part of the last century, you know, the, the sexual revolution, the free love movement. It's like, you know, this, this beautiful gift of human sexuality that God has entrusted to humanity, uh, the way in which man and woman through the sacrament of matrimony, uh, they give themselves entirely to somebody else. This beautiful sacred thing has been kind of taken around and, and flaunted as like a form of entertainment. And we see the, the real plague, an epidemic of like pornography on the internet. Uh, we, see, um, we see immodest dress and immodest clothing. We see all these things in which... Um, They've really, really tarnished and, and really tried to destroy the virtues of chastity and purity and how so many virgin souls are lost. And Our Lady says there will be almost no virgin souls in the world. So pretty stark, uh, pretty stark thing Our Lady's calling out here. And, you know, it reminds me of what Our Lady said of Fatima, that you know, Our Lady said of Fatima that more souls go to hell because of sins against the flesh than any other sins. Okay, so serious stuff. The fourth reason Our Lady gives about why the light of faith would, would decline or be extinguished during this time. She said that the Masonic and other secret sects would influence society so much. And during these unfortunate times, Our Lady says, evil will invade childhood innocence. In this way, vocations to the priesthood will be lost, resulting in a true calamity. I mean, we see this so much. It's like, 
I was talking to a priest friend of mine. He said there was one priest ordained in the whole entire country of Ireland, Catholic Ireland, uh, last year. It was either last year or the year before. But, you know, regardless, it's like this tremendous decline of priestly vocations in the world. Um, you know, that childhood innocence that's lost, uh, that's, that's tremendous. You know, we see young people today exposed to so much stuff. You know, I mentioned, bef you know, before, like, you know, pornography and the internet and all the Amada stuff on the TV for sure. But you think about like all the violent video games and stuff. I was uh, reading a story about, you know, one video game in particular that like imitated school shootings and stuff. Like awful, awful, awful stuff. But, you know, so many things seeking to corrupt that childhood innocence. All right. Fifth reason, Our Lady of Good Success gives for a decline of faith at this time. Our Lady says that faithful religious, there would be, I'm sorry, there would be some faithful religious that would be willing to suffer all for the salvation of souls and the sustenance of the Holy Catholic Church. Quote, the secular clergy will leave much to be desired because priests will become careless in their sacred duties. Lacking the divine compass, they will stray from the road traced by God for the priestly ministry, and they will become attached to wealth and riches, which they will unduly strive to attain. How much, how much the church would suffer during the, will suffer during this dark night. And you know, I, I don't think there's anything that pains me more as a priest. You know, um, like the Eucharist is the most sacred thing a priest is called to celebrate. The priest does, you know, the sacraments are the most sacred things a priest does and celebrates. And it's like, how many times, uh, it's so sad when you see, um, you know, priests, just kind of rushing through Mass or, or being willy-nilly with how they handle the Eucharist. You know, um, that, that kind of laxity that creeps in and, you know, our, our actions speak louder than our words, right? You know, so what those actions tell to all the faithful, you know, the, the faithful who are trying. Um, you know, it's awful. It's horrible. And, uh, you know, how comfortable we've been blessed, especially in this country, in America. You know, um, I was able to go on two pilgrimages to Mexico during my time in seminary formation. And, and uh, in a particular way, we looked at how the church was persecuted in Mexico during the early part of the 20th century, uh, how so many priests and bishops were martyred for the faith, for being faithful, for not, not cowering down. You know, like uh, fierce persecution they endured and, and many suffered even martyrdom from. You know, and it's like in this country, I know from my own experience and uh, from the experience of so many, it's like we've been blessed in so many ways uh, with religious freedom. We've been blessed uh, to, yeah, to not have to worry about a lot as priests, uh, as clergy in this country. Uh, and how, unfortunately, you know, that could make us too attached to comforts, to worldly stuff, and, and make us too lax in the things where we should, we should be more serious. We should be, we should be most serious about, namely the sacraments of the church and divine worship. All right. So serious stuff, not really particularly uplifting uh, message, but I think especially in the midst of our confusing time, in the midst of so many things that are discouraging, you know, the fact that Our Lady called this out, you know, so many centuries ago, you know, in 1634, that like none of this stuff escapes God's providence. Um, you know, this prophetic warning of Our Lady of Good Success is still very much alive uh, today. And like Our Lady gives some reasons too to Mother Mariana about how these prophecies will be, uh, how, how we can le lend credence to these prophecies. Uh, Our Lady of Good Success said, you know, the dogma of the Immaculate Conception will be proclaimed during a time when the church will be strongly attacked and my vicar will find himself a prisoner. And this was the case because the Immaculate Conception was defined by Pope Pius IX in 1854. So that happened. What else? Our Lady also says that the dogma of the faith of the Assumption, Mary being assumed body and soul into heaven, uh, that would also occur. And that happened in 1950 with Pope Pius XII. And Our Lady says, I will preserve the church. I will preserve this church, the Catholic Church, so beloved by me until the consummation of time. It will be strongly attacked, but it will never be conquered. So the church will be strongly attacked, but never conquered. So the gates of hell will not prevail against the Catholic Church. Uh, strongly attacked, absolutely, but conquered, never. Uh, so we just place our trust in that promise of the Lord, which is still true today. And in the midst of all the things that are meant to be really discouraging, uh, call for us more and more to radically respond to that call to be saints. Uh, you know, the saints who move the church forward through history. You know, the holiness of men and women baptized who are the church. Uh, so we pray for that grace to respond more radically to that call to be saints. Uh, and place our trust in our Lord's providence and our Lady's powerful, powerful intercession. God bless you.